Welcome to today's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. I'm your host, evangelist Anita Rivera. It is August 30th. I can't believe how quickly the time has gone. August 30th, 2023. Before we know it, we're going to be um, ringing in the new year, 2024, in a few months. What? Uh, September, October, November, in like three months. So anyway, we, we just... We give God thanks, even in the times that we're living in. I must say, especially in the times that we're living in. I, I pray that God help us to have a good and obedient heart in these times that we're living in. Amen? That he continue to bless us uh, with a sound mind, looking on to Jesus, who truly is the author and the finisher of our faith. I pray that God continue to help us to receive his perfect love, which cast out all fear. I pray that God give us the eyes, his eyes, that we need to see all things the way he sees it, through his Holy Spirit, through his word, through his truth, amen? Because nothing else matters except Jesus. Please understand, nothing else matters except the word of God, who is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And in the book of Revelation, he makes it very clear that he is coming again quickly, and every eye shall see him, even them that pierced him. The Bible is very clear that Jesus Christ is the Word of God, according to the Gospel of John chapter 1, and in the book of Genesis chapter 1, that Jesus, the Word of God, was in the beginning with God, and he established all things the creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. He is the only one that matters. And I pray that God give us understanding to see everything the way he sees it, so that we're not dismayed, we're not troubled, we're not looking at things, and and it and in and, 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 and doing so, it's allowing it to be magnified and seeking to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. But see, God says, what, he said that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of those strongholds, casting down every imagination and every high thing that seeks to exalt itself above the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ Jesus. And, and when we do so, we get to punish disobedience because our obedience has been fulfilled. And I pray that wherever we're lacking to where we, we, we have not been able to punish disobedience because our obedience has been fulfilled, that it be taken care of in the name of Jesus. I pray God's spirit be upon us this day. I pray that we are serving him and that we're submitted to him every moment of every day. I pray that our hands are doing nothing other than what God has called it to do, that our feet is going nowhere else other than where God has called it to go. I pray that our heart beats for nothing else, for no one else other than Jesus and Jesus alone. I pray that our heartbeat has no other rhythm, no rhythm that fear would give it, no rhythm that, that worry would give it or the, or the whims or the rhythm of this world, but only by the Spirit of God. May the Spirit of God lead every organ of our body, every, every muscle of our body, every fiber, every member of our body in the name of Jesus because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I pray that we are submitted and surrendered unto the King of kings and unto the Lord of lords, unto His word and His word alone, not the words of this world. The Bible says that people in the last days will be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, but I pray that God have us established, that he help us to be established, that he help us surrender our every part of our lives to him so that he can put us a kingdom which can never be shaken, so that we can be established on the rock, on the firm foundation which is Jesus Christ, and that our, 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 our life is not built on anything else, not on sand, because listen, when the storm comes, and make no mistake about it, it is coming. Listen, there was a, a massive storm that hit Florida within the past 24 hours. If, if we could see in the natural as we are, what is happening in the spirit, we'll see how, how real God is. We'll see how utterly important it is that we establish our life on the firm foundation, which is Jesus Christ. So that when the storm comes, even though that house is beat on, the wind pummels it, 
When the storm leaves, it is still standing because the storm came to do nothing but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God says, listen, I have come so that you may have life and that much more abundantly. So I pray that whatever may be happening around us, whatever is trying to breathe threats down our necks, that we stand in the evil day, having done all to stand, and that we get to laugh in the face of adversity, that we get to laugh in the face of destruction, just as Job did, that we get to stand, uh, that we get to stand circumspectly, redeeming the time, knowing that the days are evil, and that we walk in the wisdom and in the light of God's word, and that we speak as the oracles of God, and that we are quiet because we're in the presence of the Lord, because the day of the Lord is at hand, and we're able to speak and be ready in season and out of season to give a word to those for the hope and for the joy that is within us, because God truly lives in us. He rules in us. He is sovereign over us and over our own affairs, not this world, not men, not women, not you know circumstances but God and God alone can I get an amen can God get an amen because I think he needs to hear our amens because there's so much things that are happening and it's not turning around but see it doesn't matter that it's not turning around what matters is that it's that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever you see I have a report to share with you all just like I always listen on these broadcasts that's all I do I give you reports I give you headlines from all around the world this is a ministry that God has allowed me to do for well over 13 14 years now now, consistently preaching the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ and he allows me this is the mantle that he gave me to preach about the end times to preach about the day of the Lord and so our motto if you will has, has always been that the day of the Lord is at hand and the scripture uh, you know that has established our foundation is found in the gospel of Luke chapter 14 verse 18 through 19 that the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to 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 you know preach the gospel of 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 of, of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to you know to proclaim deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are oppressed and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God which is the day of the Lord listen we're truly living in the last days. So I get to bring to you all these headlines, and I'm happy to do so because we get to see what the Bible has to say about it. Listen, that's the lenses. That's our, our, our glasses, if you will. That, that is our eyesight. That as we see what the world is throwing uh, at everybody's way, we could put on a pair of sunglasses, if you will. We could put on our eyes, and we ought to be having them on at all times, and we get to search the scriptures to see what the Bible says about the situation so that we're not tossed, like I said, to and fro with every wind of doctrine. We're not moved in any Adamic mo emotions, any fallen uh, you know, emotions, uh, you know, such as fear and worry and anxiety and, and upsetness and, and all sorts of angst uh, because we're not established in, in the word of God. We don't need to be all about that. We just need to be in Christ again, because these headlines continue to come out. But honestly, I don't care what's happening. It's like, yes, it is happening. And if I do have a care for it, it's more in the fact that I see that his day is coming. As, as horrible as the situation is or as things are and, and as all the events that are happening around the world, there are really a lot of things that are very prophetic and it's just really, it's not good, you know? But in all reality, I don't care about it. All I care about is God. All I care about is Jesus and I just want to be with him. I look forward to the day that I get to be with him. There's coming... Um, a wedding supper of the lamb is what the Bible says and you know there's a lot of in the church is a lot of con I say the word controversy but a lot of doctrine you know some say well the church is a is a bride and others say well the Bible says in the book of Revelation that New Jerusalem is a bride and that the church is the body of Christ and that we get to marry in into the the covenant that has now been between God and man and, and now we get to be partakers of the new city the New Jerusalem uh, and, you know the new heaven the new earth amen and amen okay all I know is that I got invited to a wedding of all weddings you know to to the marriage supper of the lamb and I'm looking forward to seeing it I don't care if I'm at the all the way at the end I'm not trying to be at the end as long as I get to see Jesus though I don't mind being at the end <laughs> as long as I'm in the presence of the Lord I don't mind being at the end but if the end gets me out of you know if I'm not able to see him then it's probably not where I want to be what I'm saying is I just want to be where he's at whatever makes him happy 
whatever whatever is gonna you know whatever puts a smile on the Lord's face because he's done so much for us you know he's given us everything he's given us the light of his word he's given us the spirit of God so that we can be born again he's given us a, I say you know what some would say a second chance but he's really given us a new life it's not just about a second chance yes it is but it, he's given us a new life he's made us new creatures new creations in him if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have all passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things are of God now. And he, he's calling us to not be afraid, but to be in love with him. Because perfect love casts out fear. But how can you be in love if you don't know his love for you? That's so perfect. That's so godly, so holy, so penetrable, so, so, so receiving of you. He loves you so much. He already, he wants to overtake you in his love. And in doing so, you get to love him back. I'm in love with Jesus. I'm in love with the word of God. I'm in love with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I am in love. And that's only because of his great love towards me. And, you know, regardless of what has happened in, in again, in, in, in my life or in, in just the world or whatever, uh, you know, does it try to trip me up? That's, that's without saying. What, what matters is that God is. <laughs> And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So I just want to take a moment in this broadcast, in the beginning of this broadcast report, and say, Jesus, I love you. And I give God praise for his spirit that is in me. In Jesus' name, amen. Excuse me, everyone. I don't mean to tear up, but it's all good. So let me get into this report to share with you all. <laughs> because I'm excited about my father. And I believe, he's come, I believe something is happening in the spirit Yes, yeah, something is happening in the spirit. It always is in, in a good way, you know. I just wanted to say that I'm in love with the Lord because I look forward to seeing him. And yes, yeah, something is happening in the spirit, without a doubt, of course. So many people are aware of this, not just the godly, but also the ungodly. And the ungodly is seeking opportunity to take advantage of it at their own demise, at their own peril. Do they see that? I don't know, and I don't know if they really care I believe that many of them believe that there's some type of human human trafficking of, of the Christian sort, if you will, underground, if you will, and, and, and willing to be a tear attached to a wheat, just like Jesus said, that the wheat and the tears will grow up together, and they have to because if it's, it's, if it's, if it's reaped before the time in taking out the tear that attached itself to the wheat because uh, an evil person decided to sow it among the wheat, they, they sow to, you know, to sow the unrighteous with the righteous. In, in trying to remove that tear, you're going to destroy the wheat. You're going to destroy the righteous. So we got to wait for it to be at its fullness at the harvest. And then when the harvest comes, then both will be reaped. The tears will be thrown into everlasting fire. And the wheat will now be received into the kingdom of God. And it is no different. And yet the tares, the unrighteous, it has been attached itself to the wheat, to the righteous. Believe, ah, ha, ha, I have found a way of escape without having to surrender without having to believe in this Jesus. As a matter of fact, I get to do all that I get to do and just, you know, use this righteous as my way of escape, as my idol, as my way of salvation and threaten God, if you will, like at a terrorist attack and say, listen, I, this is, the, you know, this is what I got of yours. Now what? <laughs> God's not moved. He'll wait. We have to remember, we got to let patience have his perfect work so that we may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. We will remember that we will, you know, we got to let it, okay, we'll just, we'll, 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 we'll wait it out. Come on. Don't, don't let the enemy trip you up and, and, and make you feel like, you know, it's just not happening. How come you're still in this position? How come you're still going through that? How come this is still happening? No, no, no. Say, listen, I, I'm, I'm in a waiting position. Those who wait on the Lord will be of, uh, of, of good courage. The, the Bible says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So, thank you, Lord Jesus, I will wait. I know the enemy's trying to breathe down my back. How come it's still this? How come nothing is so calmly? How come nothing's changed? How come you're in this position? Yada, yada, yada. How come he's allowed it to go on this long? Say, no, no, no. I'm waiting on the Lord. You ain't trying to trip me up with your little whatever, with your nonsense, with your lies. A lies but for a moment, but the word of God is established forever and ever. This is what the Bible says. So don't mind waiting. Be busy in your waiting. Be about your father's business while you're waiting. Wash some dishes. Get up and clean your house. Go to work. Uh, you know, read the Bible. You know, go to the beach. Whatever. Go grocery shopping. Whatever it is, play with your children. Watch a movie. I'll wait. 
Because the day of the Lord truly is at hand. And we ain't going to be tripped up by what we think we ought to be right now versus where God has called us to be. And the enemy, listen, the enemy knows he has but a short time. And he's using the big things uh, at his disposal and the little things at his disposal. Make no mistake about it. I was watching the B movie with my kids last night. The B movie is so cute. The animation cartoon movie. And there was a portion in the beginning of the, of the movie... Uh, they were showing how the bees were going to be uh, to their new uh, job assignments. And then they were breaking down every part of their their honey factory. And uh, in one of the parts, they said, okay, this is a new edition where the bees, uh, along with this type of uh, this new machine, would catch every little bit of honey that would be left at the bottom of the bottle that people would typically throw away. And so they had a bee to get every drop and to put it into its new container so that nothing is wasted. And we know what the Bible said. Jesus said that when the disciples, when, when all 5,000 people have eaten, you know, when they ate after Jesus divided the loaves and the, and, and, and the fish, that the disciples gathered up 12 baskets full so that nothing is wasted. But check this out. Check this out. The tear will try to copy the wheat at all costs, as much as it possibly can. And so the tear, you know, the kingdom of darkness has its own little system, its own little way of making sure that not one drop, not one, one opportunity is wasted. And right now in the last hour that we're living in, the enemy has uh, got new recruits, if you will, and, and, and new systems and new ways of making sure that don't miss the little. You know, the devil's saying, don't, don't miss the, the tiny, the tiny opportunities, what looks like breadcrumbs to, 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 you know, you know, to, you know, to us before. We can't even ignore it now. We have to take up every opportunity to try to uh, throw a stumbling block, even as small as a crumb. In, in that one's life because the hour is late the day is at hand and his time is short and he's already let his cohorts know my time is short they already know the kingdom of darkness knows that their time is short that's why they're going to go out of their way to stretch a dollar they're going to go out of their way to stretch the time if you will and the bible says it in the book of daniel the the word of god says in chapter 7 verse 8 he shall intend to change times and law he will seek to change the laws of physics. He will seek to change times and law. The time is upon us. But he says, no, no, no. Let me stop the core of the earth and do a reverse here and see if I can extend my time. See if I can stretch my dollar. Maybe use a few coupons, if you will. Use some expired, outdated uh, sources of mine that I haven't used because it is now. It, listen, the devil's going to have a time, times and a half a time on this earth. But what matters, if, we, if, if, if our mind is focused on Jesus, if we have the mind of Christ, if, he, if we have allowed the Holy Spirit to seize us, the way that the devil seeks to seize us, <laughs> but if we allow the Spirit of God to seize us and to surrender our entire lives to God and cry out to God for salvation, then we will see things, like I said, the way he sees it. And he's not moved. He's not afraid. He's strong. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's, he's everywhere. And God says, I have given you a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Behold, I shake heaven and earth once more so that anything that can be shaken will be shaken. Some of you are trying to hold on to things near and dear to you that you say, well, no, it's so important. And what you're holding on to is a demon. You don't even realize it. And God says, listen, I'm about to shake your house. I'm about to shake you up. I'm about to shake your relationship up, your marriage or whatever. And, and I'm going to shake your you know, professional life, whatever it is, because you're holding on to this thing that you see one way, but I see, and you need to see through my eyes. And when you see it through my eyes, you're going to see it for the devil that it is, for the demon that it is. And when I shake you, don't be afraid because I'm going to hold you. I'm going to have you in the palm of my hand. And, I, and, and, and the shaking is necessary so that you can receive a kingdom which can never be shaken. And listen, it's painful that that period of sanctification, of consecration, of shaking, it is intense. But you, it, it, you, you will not want it any other way. You, there is no shortcuts to God's holiness, to God's spirit, to God's truth. You don't want it any other way, friend. Listen, the devil tried it with Jesus in the, in the wilderness when Jesus was walking in the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights, and he was tempted by Satan. Satan introduced Jesus to a shortcut to the cross. Listen, if you turn this rock into, if you turn this stone into bread, you'll be able to eat because you haven't eaten in, in so many weeks. And Jesus says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Satan sought to tempt Jesus again. Listen, if you look at all the kingdoms that have been given to me, all of this is mine. 
And I will give it to you if you will bow down and worship me. And Jesus said, thou shalt worship the Lord your God and only him shall you serve. And so Satan, by this time, he's getting annoyed. He's realizing his temptations are not working, even though they are intense. He's saying, wait a minute. So far, one, strike one, strike two. This is not looking good. I'm about to go off. And now he goes to Jesus, throw yourself off the temple. And it, it is written that if you, you know, that the angels will catch you and not even a foot will be scraped on the ground because you'll be caught. Throw yourself off. And Jesus, by this time, he got angry. And Jesus said, thou shalt not put the Lord your God to the test. Now it's game on. Now Jesus walked out of the wilderness filled with God's Holy Spirit. The same spirit, by the way, that led him into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. This is where, if you, somebody's mowing their lawn as I'm broadcasting live, or I hear a lawnmower is what it sounds like to me, but we'll just, we'll, we'll press on. It's not, not even a thing. I, I, I'm just making a point that, there are several points being made right now in, in the first 22 minutes of this broadcast is that we, we, we have to allow the Spirit of God to lead us in every, in every way. To not, to not take shortcuts, to not think that we, this is taking too long and allow Satan to tempt us with a shortcut. He did the same thing. I, I won't say, you know, I just say he did the same thing. Let me, let me kind of segue that a bit. Abraham kind of went through something. Actually, he did go through something uh, with a shortcut situation, if you will. And, and Ishmael was produced and Isaac was on the way. Isaac was already in the works. He was, he was already planned. But they, they, were, they were tired of waiting. They were exhausted in their waiting. And see, God is calling us not to um, be weighed down by the cares or the worries of this life. Don't be exhausted in your waiting. In order for you to be strengthened in your inner man while you're waiting... The Bible says in the book of Acts that times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. You have to spend time with God. You have to. You're spending time everywhere else and with everyone else. And none of these things or places or people can refresh you the way that God can. And then when you finally do give God uh, you know, a minute of your time is right before you go to sleep. You have a, a quick thought of him. And that's nice. But that, that's, I mean, come on. Stop fooling yourself. That's silly. You know, you put only a minute of time at work, you're not going to get probably, you're not going to get paid. But, you know, but you give a minute of time of the Lord and you think you're going to get paid, if you will. And God's saying, listen, I, you have to let me, you, let me refresh you, spend time in my presence. No shortcuts, friends. Allow patience to have his perfect work so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. All right. I got to get into the headline report. And I'm glad we got to speak. Amen. Thank you, Father. A draconian new law went into effect on August 25th. This is according to the themostimportantnews.com that institutes extreme censorship of the internet on a global basis. All right, what is this? Let's read. The internet just changed forever, but most people living in the United States don't even realize what just happened. A draconian new law known as the Digital Services Act, DSA, went into effect in the European Union on Friday, just this past Friday. And it establishes an extremely strict regime of the internet censorship that is far more authoritarian than anything we have ever seen before. From this point forward, hordes of European bureaucrats will be the arbiters of what is acceptable to say on the internet. If they discover something that you have said on a large online platform that they do not like, they can force that platform to take it down because someone in Europe might see it. So even though this is a European law, friends, the truth is that it's going to have a tremendous impact on everyone. Now, from this point, nothing will be the same. It's being reported right now that the DSA literally makes large tech companies, and I quote, legally accountable for the content posted to them. That report. The European Union's Digital Service Act, DSA, has officially gone into effect. And starting August 25th, 2023, tech giants like Google, Facebook, Amazon, and more must comply with sweeping legislation that holds online platforms legally accountable for the content posted to them. Even though this new law was passed in the European Union, will likely see far-reaching global effects as companies, as companies adjust their policies to comply. That was that report. Now, it's still in line with the same thing that we're talking about initially. 
and there will be 19 giant online platforms that will be forced to comply with this new law. That report. Ranging from social media platforms to online marketplaces and search engines, the list so far includes Facebook, TikTok, X, formerly known as Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Snapchat, Amazon, Booking, AliExpress, Zalando, Google Shopping, Wikipedia, Google Maps, Google and Apple's mobile app stores, Google Search, and Microsoft Bing, just to name a few. But starting on February 24th, 2024, the Digital Services Act will start applying to a much broader spectrum of online platforms that have fewer than 45 million monthly users. We're being told that this new law will establish clear rules that online platforms must follow. They're saying that will include censoring anything that is deemed false or misleading under the strengthened code of practice on disinformation. So what kind of speech is the DSA expecting to police? Last year's strengthened code of practice on disinformation defines disinformation as false or misleading content that is spread with an intention to deceive or secure economic or political gain and which may cause public harm. The code has already been put to work during the elections and to respond to crises such as what we went through uh, within the past couple years with the inoculations and the war in Ukraine. I have to be careful because I said the actual word uh, and was uh, one of the one broadcast was taken down because I said the C word. So now I'm saying inoculations. And it really doesn't matter, they say, if material that European bureaucrats consider to be false or misleading is actually false of or misleading at all. What matters is that if online platforms do not comply with what they are being told, they will pay dearly. Online platforms that don't comply with the DSA's rules could see fines of up to 6% of their global turnover. According to the European Union Commission, the Digital Services Coordinator and the Commission will have the power to require immediate actions where necessary to address very serious harms. A platform continually refusing to comply could result in a temporary suspension in the European Union. So here you have big tech companies that will be desperate to avoid such penalties and so they will obey. And so that means that hundreds of unelected European Union bureaucrats will be in control of speech on the internet now on, from now on. Under this Orwellian regime, a team of hundreds of unelected European Union bureaucrats will decide what constitutes disinformation and instruct the big tech firms to censor it. The firms themselves faced with reputational risk and financial penalties will have little choice other than to comply. This can be done in all manner of ways, simply by human moderators, removing content, by shadow banning problematic creators to reduce their reach, or by dem demonetizing certain content, and by tweaking algorithms to favor or disfavor certain topics. And though legally speaking, the DSA only applies in the European Union, once installed inside big tech firms, this vast content regulation apparatus will surely affect users in the rest of the world too. Yikes! Okay. So we're being told that these European Union bureaucrats will also be working with trusted flaggers, quote unquote, to help identify content that needs to be censored. The DSA trusted flaggers are entities with proven expertise in flagging harmful or illegal content to platforms. The new regulation provides that their content flagging shall be prioritized by platforms when moderating content. I'm just seeing this like spread like wildfire. I mean, but I think it's been happening and now we're reaching the internet. This is something that's already been cooking. So you might be tempted to think that you will be able to avoid all this censorship because you don't live in Europe. You're like, hey, I'm here in the US or Australia or wherever you're tuning in, right? But that is not true. You see, if you post something that someone in Europe might see, your content comes under the jurisdiction of this horrifying new law. So you need to brace yourself for a level of internet censorship that none of us have ever seen before. In addition, most of the large tech companies that must comply with this new law are based in the United States. And it turns out that the Federal Trade Commission actually sent officials to Europe in March to assist with the implementation of this new law on United States soil. That report. U.S. Senate Commerce Committee Ranking Member Ted Cruz of Texas today sent letters to Federal Trade Commission Chairwoman Lena Khan and the head of the European Union San Francisco office demanding answers regarding the degree of coordination between the FTC and the European Union to enforce the European Union's Digital Service Act, also known as DSA, and Digital Market Act's DMA on U.S. soil. Both foreign laws were written to weaken American tech companies, particularly in Europe. There are no... There are no 
corollary federal laws to the DSA and DMA, making the FTC's efforts to conspire with foreign regulators against U.S. businesses unprecedented. The FTC announced in March that it was sending agency officials to Brussels to assist the European Union in implementing these laws, while the European Union opened a San Francisco office to pressure U.S. tech companies to comply with them. You see, from this point forward, it's going to become much more difficult to share alternative views on the Internet. Personally, there will be certain things that will only be able to be shared in other areas, other venues. So just be ready for things to have to change for people like myself and, and those who and the one who wrote this article and others who value uh, the opportunity to share their perspective, um, especially in light of what the scripture says. Um, we're, it looks like we're all going to have to be, we're, it's like we have to be very careful about what's being shared now, just so we don't offend. Like I said, one of my recent broadcasts, um, not the one that I did recent, but the one prior to the one I did recent was taken down because I, I, I used the C word the, the, with regards to the inoculation. Um, and so that, you know, that's, uh, we, we've seen this already happening, but this is not relenting. They're going full speed ahead on this and they're doing it to make people afraid. They're doing it so that people um, won't feel that they're independent workers anymore. Uh, journalists, ministers, preachers, um, you know, and more. For a long time, the internet allowed people, regular people like you and I, to share what, you know, what, what, you know, what, what perspective we have the truth of the scriptures and other things, especially with the world that is, you know, desperately looking for it. But now you have gatekeepers that are exerting a draconian level of control and the internet will never be the same again. And listen, it's not just going to be in the internet. It's not like what happens on the internet stays on the internet. This is going to be in the internet and outside of the internet. The internet has become the spirit of the fallen man, of those that have rejected the truth, those who have rejected the light and have embraced the darkness. You know, like, okay, in Christianity, as born-again, spirit-filled believers, we know the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and we're born again by the Holy Spirit, the breath of life. The, the, the third person of the Godhead literally has made our spirit born again, and now we serve and worship Jesus Christ as, as our Lord and as our Savior. And we follow, we, we are led by the Spirit of God in all things. But when it comes to the, the, the ones that are part of the Antichrist beast system, they do have a spirit um, and it is an Antichrist spirit. And for those that they want to be partakers, that they want to have partake with them part of this Antichrist spirit, they have to start with what they have. They, they can't just overwhelm you just yet. Now, they're going to come a time for that very soon, I think. And, I, you know, that's what the Bible says will take place, that he will cause all both small and great, rich and poor and free and slave to take a mark on their right hand or on their forehead so that no one will be able to buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast or the number of his name. But first, they're going to start off, you know, so callingly gently. This is their gently censorship, draconian level of control, gatekeepers. And they're going to say, listen, this is... For the safety of the of, of 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 you know, for the safety of people, it's just for the safety of their their um, you know of society. You, we just have to become one in mind. We have to be, become one in language, in speech. We have to become one in our decision making, in our belief system, and that's you know the Bible talks about that being the Tower of Babel, and it's, it's recorded for us in Genesis chapter eleven. Got it right here. Genesis chapter 11, this is where it's leading to. And it's not just going to be like, well, I mean, here, you know, I just said, you know, I mean, you know, you know, you know, some will say, well, I don't live in Europe, so that doesn't affect me. But the thing is, again, it's, it's going to be affecting people worldwide. So then you can say, well, forget it. I don't need the Internet. You know, some people make their living off the Internet. So that's we're going to get to a lot of issue. Some people are going to have to make some very um, hard decisions as to whether they compromise who they are and their convictions, God forbid. Uh, for the sake of still getting whatever pay they get from online work or services, or they um, say, you know what, you know, <laughs> you ain't, you, you don't even know what kind of person I am to even ask me this, and I'll just whatever the internet stuff. Um, 
Knowing that God has never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. Come on. But I think we're coming to a point where we're looking at um, a, a clear line of delineation as to who is of the Lord and who is not. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east and th that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men have built. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they, I want to make sure I'm looking at this right. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So here you have, uh, you know, and, and, and it says here, so the Lord scattered them abroad from their over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the earth, because at that time it was not yet the time. That time, times and a half a time, that's prophesied in the book of Daniel for the Antichrist to rule and reign. So here we are, fast forward, a major fast forward, and now we're looking at the same spirit, the same Babylonian spirit. Uh, the same Antichrist spirit seeking to um, usher in a oneness, a unity that is Antichrist. That's outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not of him. It's not truth. It's not true. And so we can't be moved by this. You know, I, I said it's going to start in the, you know, it's, they, they want to, you know, get the internet and, and really tackle your voice, you know, tackle the word, um, bind it, if you will. And it really truly is spiritual warfare. This is all very spiritual, even though it's happening in, in, in real time, in the natural. But what we have to understand is that this is not just going to stay in the internet. This is going to also be part of workplaces and um, being able to do certain things and we, we shouldn't be this we shouldn't be moved or afraid of any of this though this shouldn't move us it, it's just nothing to us because the Lord is with us because Jesus is Lord you know the internet is not Lord as much as we'd like to share our perspective on certain things we're not Lord <laughs> Jesus Christ is Lord. His word is Lord. His word is truth. And now what we have to really be on top of is because they, this Antichrist beast system also has the time, times and a half a time. They have uh, the authority and, and they're going to have a time to really bring forth a pressure, a wearied. They're going to try to wear, you know, wear the saints out, weary them, um, you know, take away, you know, you know, you know, you know, like, you know, you know, uh, they're going to, you know, they're going to. Uh, what's it say in the book of Daniel? It says they're going to throw truth to the ground in such a, a ungodly, blasphemous way to, to try to suck the life out of you, to try to drain you in, to try to make you feel hopeless, to try to make you feel uh, left with no nothing to stand. But it's in those times that the Holy Spirit will rise. And that is... That's an area kept... That's an area kept for the Holy Spirit. Goodness gracious. Pardon me again. I only say this because some people may be concerned about this time. Like, man, then who is able to stand? <laughs> we won't be able to stand. But the Holy that 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 is uh, an area that only the Holy Spirit knows how to protect and keep for that person during that during such a time of persecution during a time of such intense pressure during a time of uh hate because this is really what it is it's hate it's a it's a it's an attack and you will not be able to do this in your own spirit or in your own strength this is a uh, power and a time and a trust and a truth that's only reserved for the Holy Spirit, 
for those who are truly those who truly belong to Jesus Christ. And I'm I'm grateful that we have the helper for that time because we wouldn't be able to stand, truly. We would not be able to stand in the evil day having done all to stand, just like it says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And um, so we're, we, we, we're going to need the Spirit of God in, in all this. Uh, it, yes, I, I can sit here and I can tell you none of this matters, and it really doesn't. But I see by the Holy Spirit how ungodly things can be when the time of the Antichrist is in effect and would be very terrible just like it says in the book of Daniel it would be very terrible Daniel the prophet saw how the time would be when the Antichrist beast system rises and he said that he got sick I want to I want to share that portion of scripture with you before I end the broadcast in the book of Daniel In the book of Daniel, um, in the book of Daniel, it says here in chapter 7, verse 15, he says, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. And I came, to, I came near to one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all this. Because he just saw a lot, a vision of the Lord. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of those things. And he was, at that moment, um, explained to about the beast. About the Antichrist beast system. And the Bible says that when he had these visions and he was seeing them, he was so troubled that it says here also in Daniel chapter 8 verse 15, that it happened when I, Daniel, had seen the vision and was seeking the meaning that suddenly there stood before me one having the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Uli who called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood and when he came I was afraid and fell on my face. But he said to me, understand, son of man, that the vision refers to the time of the end. Now as he was speaking to me, speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep with my face to the ground. But he touched me and stood me upright. And he said, look, I am making known to you what shall happen in the latter time of the indignation. For at the appointed time, the end shall be. And so Daniel saw all this. And it says here in the same chapter, but this time in verse 27. And I, Daniel, fainted. And I was sick for days afterward. I arose and went about the king's business. I, I was astonished by the vision, but no one understood it. He fainted and he was sick and he was beside himself. He was grieved, he was sick, and he fainted. So I say all this because all these draconian measures is going to be, uh, you know, is going to take a, a form of um, intensity. And I don't want it to, you know, I want us to have time to enjoy what God has given us, but in our reality, if we're already in the time, if we're already living in the last days, and I believe we are, then we ought to let go of the things of this world. We ought to let go even of what we have perceived that is good from the Lord, not giving it over to wickedness or evil, not, not, not that, but I'm saying in letting it go, meaning surrendering it to the Lord and saying, Lord, if now is the time, then gird me up handle me the way I need to be handled and to prepare for the times that are upon us and not just me but my family my children um and 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 have us to you know have us to be at your will have us to be at your and in you hide us and, and and have us to be in your beck and call um there was something else I was going to say shucks what the heck was it um so that we can be ready but shucks what was I going to say when, when, we, when we submit and surrender even what we'd like to enjoy still uh, of the times that we're living in, of the life that we get to be partakers of, um, that's, that's, a, that's a good thing because we get to be ready in the sight of the Lord. Um, he gets to work in us in preparation as we're still going about our daily business, our daily works, of course. Um, but we're not, we won't be afraid when the time comes that they 
that the pressure is now at a point where they say, okay, you can still enjoy your so-called freedoms. <laughs> something as simple as turning on the TV or being allowed to eat or purchase something or, or being allowed to basically be in your own home and have control of your own uh, hands, if you will, uh, you will give you your freedom back as long as you now be part, you know, as long as you, now you have to partake of our own societal mark, our, our, our new mindset, our new belief, and, and we would now overtake you. That's where, because you surrendered and submitted prior to that, now when that time comes, it won't even be a question. The Holy Spirit will rise in a way that will confound the, 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 the demonic actors that will be part of this beast system. Do you understand? So my prayer as I end this broadcast is that those who are in the middle, those who are, have not fully surrendered their life to Jesus Christ, who have not fully made a decision for Jesus, he's already made a full decision for you. He's already chosen you. He's already, he, he already went to the cross for you to die for your sin. He took upon your sin upon his own body. The bottom... Please understand that the Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. He already made a decision for you. And, and now what you have to do is that you have to receive what he did for you. You, have, you, you get an opportunity to receive the gift of eternal life and to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus is not a lucky rabbit's foot. You can't keep him on the side just in case. He's not a just in case. He's not your get out of jail free card. He's not your backup. Jesus Christ is God. He is Lord of heaven and earth. He is a creator of all things. The book of Revelation makes it very clear. Jesus is the I am that I am. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Jesus is not... A backup he is God and he's already chosen you he already made a way for you when there was no other way and what you have to do right now is, is that you can't delay your salvation you can't delay this because it's late already it's awfully late time is up so you have to surrender your life to Jesus and I pray that the Spirit of God help you to do that that he give you understanding to know what to do in this situation so that you can surrender and um, not delay any longer. I say this because people have been delaying. They think like you have all this time left. I'll just do it later. I, I'll just do it later. You Listen, do your dishes later. I don't care. I know in the beginning I was saying, you know, do your dishes. <laughs> but I'm, now I'm kind of not reverting. I was making a point. If you have to delay anything, delay things that could be delayed. That doesn't matter if you delay it. But don't delay God. Don't delay Jesus because the Bible says in the book of Revelation that time will delay no longer. And God did not delay about you. The Bible says that in, in the Gospels it says that Jesus came in the fullness of time. He came perfectly to rescue you. He came at the perfect time to make sure you were not going to be delayed. To make sure that you will not have to taste the sting of death. To make sure that you will, be, that you will not have to go through the judgment but pass from judgment to life. He came in the perfect time for you. And now... He's coming to you and he's saying, listen, now is the time. Now is the day of your salvation. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Wake up. Time will delay no longer. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ. There is no other way to heaven. And for those who say, well, I don't really believe in heaven. I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in the devil. I don't believe in God. I just believe in myself. I pray that your mind change. I pray that God give you understanding. I pray that he opened up the eyes of your understanding so that you could see the truth. So that you will not be deceived. So that you won't stay in that deception. But that you receive the knowledge of the truth so that you may be saved. I pray. I pray that God help those who are stumbling, that are believers, that are of the faith, but maybe they've been stumbling lately. And in the book of Jude, this is for you. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling... And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. I pray that whatever is weak, that you would surrender it to Jesus so that it can be strengthened. I pray that those who claim to have faith in Jesus but have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that God will overshadow you and fill you and baptize you with his Holy Spirit because you desperately need it now. You need it now. You need his spirit now. This is my prayer as I end this broadcast. 
I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the Word of God. World reports, obviously matching Bible prophecy. Uh, I want to invite you to learn more about me and my church ministry by logging on to my website at www.emof.org, E-M-O-A-F.org. Uh, I also would like to extend an invite. I'm, I'm currently procuring for monthly donors. And I want to invite you. I want to. I want to. I want to ask that you consider becoming a monthly donor. Something as little as five or ten dollars a month. Maybe you're in a position that you could donate maybe a few, you know, a few dollars more, maybe fifty dollars a month, or even a hundred dollars a month towards the work of God's church, end time church ministry here at Moaf and OpenYourEyesPeople.com. That would be a blessing. So I, I, I want to ask that you would. I, I'm praying that you would consider becoming a monthly donor you could cancel at any time uh, but I'm already putting an end to something that hasn't yet started so let me first introduce an offer an opportunity to start become a monthly partner towards the work of the end time ministry your blessing your donation would be a major blessing towards the work we get to do here for people all around the world so that they can receive the gift of salvation and the truth and the knowledge to be saved and remain saved in Jesus name uh, you can donate securely again on my website at www.emof.org e m oaf.org all right friends um also if you or someone you know are in the, are in need of a letter of religious exemption i know it's kind of been picking up right now with the request for exemptions um some places of employment and, and a lot of kids going back to school and so forth uh there are some places that are now requiring it uh and and if if you're um if you are in need of one email me anita at emof.org a-n-i-t-a at E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G. I'll be sure to put all this information at the bottom of the more description section on my YouTube channel and on Facebook. Um, and you can just email me directly. I will respond within 24 hours. I respond from my Yahoo address, all things made new eight at yahoo.com. I do that for a reason. I'm able to receive messages to my Anita at emof dot org, but I can't send out. It's a mess. Don't even ask. It happened a couple years ago and Anyway, it just hasn't gotten fixed. So I now have to use my backup ministry email, which is fine. I'm grateful I have that. So you will receive an email from my Yahoo address um, with it being cc to my anita.emoaf.org. Um, sometimes if your email server does not recognize my email address, so it may send our email to the junk or your trash folder. So just be sure to check those folders if you check your inbox and you haven't received an email from us. We do, we do email within 24 hours. That is an absolute for us, very important because we know how important the situation is. So, um, if there's anything else. So uh, anyway, just, I look forward to the next church broadcast and may God bless you. He loves you so much. And, um, be, be, be one with the Lord in Jesus name. Bye-bye.